So I get asked this question a lot. Can I reduce the amount of sugar in this jam recipe? So sugar plays two important roles in preserving. One, it acts as a natural preservative, and two, it helps you achieve set. So I'm just gonna get a little bit geeky on you here. I'm gonna keep it short and sweet, so hang, try and hang in there. I'm gonna break it down for you this way. If you imagine that sugar attracts water really, really well, high concentrations of sugar in any type of solution are going to draw more water from its surroundings. So any microbe that's trying to survive in your jar of jam or your jar of jelly is basically going to get starved of any moisture that it needs, causing it to dehydrate. And that's how sugar acts as a preservative. So simply put, sugar allows your jam or your jelly to boil at a higher temperature. And this allows all of the ingredients to come together and achieve set. So a full sugar jam is going to look like this. It's going to have a set that's going to stick to your spoon. Whereas a low sugar jam is going to be a little bit softer, more syrupy, and look more like this as it comes off. Because the reduced amount of sugar allows more moisture to remain inside of the jar, for example, in this one, you can see there's more moisture there, microbial growth can occur sooner. So a softer jam or a reduced sugar jam is going to mold or go off quicker than a full sugar jam. Make low sugar jams in smaller jars. That way you know once you've opened that jar of jam that there's a really good chance that you'll be able to eat it all before it goes bad. And two, make it in smaller batches because that way it won't take you as long to get through your inventory. Use softer jams to pour over top of your pancakes or stir it into your yogurt. So now that you better understand sugar's role in preserving, you can go out and make educated decisions on whether or not you want to reduce the sugar in any kind of recipe that you come across. Happy canning! <laughs>